Hello, everyone. Welcome back with the next session. And our guest is Leo Schuler. And I see a lot of technical people uh, in the audience. <laughs> so you are at the right place. Uh, you might know Leo uh, from the GitHub forums, I mean, from Mautic forums, and also from GitHub, and also from the Mautic podcast, I believe. Uh, what I did know about him that he works uh, uh, with uh, together with IBM, um, uh, together he works at IBM together with internal teams to help implement uh, web standards, automated tests, and more. Something we really, really need here by Modic and actually by any open source project. And today's presentation will be about form submission. And this topic comes back over and over again in the forum. So I'm so glad you do this because we can just link to it and put an end of all discussion when it comes to multiple uh, submissions. So please, let's dig in. All right. Uh, thank you for the presentation. And before I be begin, just a legal disclaimer here. I, I do work at IBM, uh, but I'm here as an individual. I do not speak on behalf of the company. Uh, and my opinions may not reflect <laughs> the opinions of the company, all right? Uh, just wanted to put it out there. Not to cover myself or anything. Uh, all right, let me start sharing. Okay, just a second. Uh, all right, let me know if you, I guess you guys are already seeing this. All right, let's jump into it. How to prevent a duplicate submission of a multi form? To be honest, I was not sure if I was going to put that title, but I guess I was in the right spot. And, I, and I'm going to talk about that. But the idea is, for me is a little bigger than that. Uh, the idea is by showing how I solved that problem, you know, you got to see the potential of how Mautic can be customized, how it can be extended, you know, and maybe fell in love like like I am fell in love with, with the tool. Uh, all right. So here is what you're going to do today. I'm going to explain the scenario why I why I need to fix that. You know what was my, the problem that I was trying to solve. Uh, apparently, this is not something that needs a lot of explanation because we, in the forum we have that question a lot. All right, then I'm going to do a, a little demo, should be quick, and then we're going to dissect the solution, uh, talk about alternatives, other potential uses, and uh, don't forget, I will share the code so you can, and installation instructions at the end, so you can download and, and install it in your environment, and we will have uh, the QA. All right, uh, about the scenario, what, what I was trying to solve, what, what is the issue that I was facing? Uh, well, I'm trying to, I was trying to help that company, you know, that is trying to establish itself as an expert to sell their consulting, the solutions that they're offering. So they offer a lot of, of training and videos, uh, especially in personal training as well, to their, their prospect. Uh, the the their co the prospect companies would subscribe then their employees, and uh, there was some specific offerings that uh, for a specific public that really got me frustrated uh, because they had the tendency of subscribing multiple people with the same email. Uh, they'll say there were a retail store or. Uh, Retail store would be a market supermarketing or like a bakery store, those kind of over the public. And they usually say like contact at my store and would and would subscribe like the manager and the seller to the event with the same email or the same phone number, which kind of mess all the things up, right? So the, the problem here, like Mautic, as you know, has email is the primary key for the contact. 
So having those, those behaviors, those user behaviors would mess things up. I uh, could like address the, the lead to with the wrong in, with the wrong name or sending email to the, the wrong employee, the, the salesperson would try to reach the wrong person, you know, could, could reach could reach all kind of confused. So that's why, okay, so we need a solution to that. Why was the solution? Well, I want to prevent the leads to subscribe to enroll more than one per person with the same data. So email or phone, if they already subscribe to that event, they cannot do that again. All right, so it is a form validation. The form cannot accept submission if there is another submission with the same value. So that's the, uh, the context of the solution that was the solution is trying to solve, right? Without the further ado, let's do the demo. Uh, I think, you know, for the sake of time, I'll just show one page. Uh, so this is the form, the, the status form. It, ha it has no submission now. So let's put my email, first name, my city in my real phone number. Uh, okay, submit. Oh, all right. Yeah, a little bit, a little small uh, heartbreak here. <laughs> you know, live events tend to give an error. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, this is in Portuguese. So it's saying, okay, your subscription was successful. All right, so you can see here, uh, it should be in here, all right? Okay, yeah, I already have some, already used one, I forgot to, to, to refresh. So let's try to use that email, right? Where I use email, okay. my first name, again, there's no issue, and a new in phone number. So now you can see uh, the subscription, sorry, I have to translate to you, a subscription was already made with that with information provided and say email and phone is are the the data that I'm checking if, the, if they already exist all right uh, yeah so here is a quick demo you can see uh, the data was not saved in here so let's talk about how I did it I guess that's what people are looking for uh, but before i do it let me talk about uh yeah what other kind of uh, things you can uh, do with that type of solution so basically what i'm going to show you would serve to any type of server-side data validation right uh of course any server-side data validation will require you to modify the code uh, Complex validation will require complex coding. Uh, but out of the box the, with the code that I'll, uh, the, that I'll share and you can install, you can prevent any duplication of any form field. So you can use, for example, for coupons, like making sure people uh, a coupon was used, will not be used anymore. Uh, you can, with little modification, you can do like validation information that's not in the submission, but is in the link uh, record. So you can have a secure question, for example, make sure that the people who wrote that uh, is, our, is part of the lead record. Another interesting thing that I, uh, I'm actually thinking about Explorer, exploring, maybe in the future I'll, I'll share with you guys as well, a cell phone validation. So before validating your phone number, uh, we send an SMS and you have to type the, the code. I guess that would be a great, great, great idea. So I'm already thinking about that as well. Okay, so now you want to see what I did. But before I do that, let me show what I did not do, which also is a viable solution. But, you know, just to show how different ways you can actually do it, so what I did not do, which is perfectly possible, it seems the right solution as well, would be to create a Mautic plugin. There is a Mautic plugin exclusively for custom validation. Uh, 
here is a demo that is actually in the documentation. I will share the link in the documentation uh, if you guys are interested. Right, you can go to that solution as well. It seems straightforward from my, what I read, but it's been very while since I have a PHP, a Symfony. I don't have that kind of knowledge. It's very rusted. It will add maintenance to your Mautic environment. You know, maybe there is an update. I don't know, maybe the, the plugin will not work anymore. You know, usually I don't handle that level of installation when I use Mautic. So those are the main reasons that, that I didn't go to that solution. Uh, but the, but what I did, you know, what is the path that I took or the road taken? Well, the road taken, first thing I would, I delegate part of form, form validation to another tool, right? And I was thinking maybe this could be the title of the presentation, but I, I feel that I choose the right one based on the, what people are talking on the forum. All right, so this is what I did. I delegate part of the form validation to another tool, and that solution is, has a more flexible architecture. You can choose the language or, or the tool that, that you want to do that. And I already had that kind of solution, uh, a similar solution in place to a different prob problems. So I already have shared resource and let's go to write. Okay, so let's now, now that I, Put all that on the table. Let's talk uh, about the solution itself. All right. Uh, yeah. So I'll start explaining the solution by this this flow, which is a basic flow or how how the form works in Mautic. So basically, on the left side, you have your user browser. It handles the form, and then you have the Mautic server that process that form. Uh, inside the page, there is a Mautic form JS, which is provided by the tool out of the box Mautic installation. And that tool, uh, that JavaScript actually handles the communication between the server and the browser. Right? So any error that is triggered by the server will then be parsed by the Mautic form JS and presented. To, uh, to the form, right? Some of the error actually is, uh, some of the validation, uh, I guess majority is done server side, but also the validation is done, sorry, client side by the browser, but some of the validation also is done by the server side, all right? Well, what I add is actually, I use an action called post result to another form, so this action is already out of the box from, from Mautic. It works just like a web hook, right? You send, you could send to a, a, another form, uh, another system that has a form you can submit just like that. But it, in a sense, it's just a web, uh, a web hook. So you send the data to another tool. But this web hook has some particularities, right? So one of the first, part, first particularity, you know, is that you actually return OK, uh, HTTP 200, or an error, right? 500 error. So you return a code, either success or an error. And if it's an error, that error returns to the browser. So we actually use that for a, a validation. Uh, so, you know, if you put a, a magnifying glass to see what happened here, uh, there's an action tab on the form. I use post result to another form, and you can really use other tools. I would recommend if you, or well, I would recommend NADN. This is uh, seems to be a, a tool to go if you're not familiar with coding. You can write your own PHP as well. That is separate from uh, from Mautic. But, but it can run the same environment. 
it will work just as fine. Use Zapier or other tools. What I use particular for this is a serverless function. Serverless function is a cloud architecture to run your piece of code without worrying about you know, server, uh, server size, or anything like that. AWS was the first that, I, that implemented that. But really, nowadays, there's a, a ton of, uh, of service provider that can use serverless function. I use Netlify. Uh, and one of the difference about this webhook is an, another difference is that instead of usually a webhook, you will use text JSON as part of the communication. But this one will use a different format. The same data is sent, but it's a different uh, format. It's called form URL encoded, which is uh, the format that any form when submitting to a server will use. Other than that, it's the same thing as a webhook. So in this example, I'm using a Netlify function. I will share the code. I will share the instructions on how to, how to deploy that. Uh, the function is called check duplicate check dups, and I'm sending which which fields I want to check for duplicates. Right in this case, the email and the phone. I'm sending an authorization header just for uh, to add a security layer, so other people will not use without authorization uh, that function. All right, so once I do that, uh, the um, Mautic will return an error. This error will, will go to the server and will return to, to the user browser. What this function is doing actually is consuming the Mautic API to read all the form submission. So it will read the submission, say, wait a minute, it's trying to submit that. Um, is there any submission already? So, so yeah, it's consuming the Mautic API and returning. Um, yeah, so basically what, what it's doing and it is returning an error. That would be the basic solution, but I wish it was that simple. The, the, the error message returns to the browser. Unfortunately, because this error is not to a specific field, is not related to a specific field, uh, this Mautic form does not know what to do with this error. So uh, with the regular UI, the user will be clueless, clueless what happened. The error will be there, but you know it just doesn't show in the user interface. So another piece of the solution is to add the, a custom, is to plug a cu custom behavior on the Mautic form. And for our look, Mautic form, uh, the Mautic form JavaScript already accept those kinds of customization. So if you look at the, uh, if you look at the customization possibility, and there is a documentation for that as well, I will paste uh, the link in the description. You can actually uh, customize the behavior by plugging behavior into specific events. So three main events that happens that you can plug, there are more. Uh, whenever there is a response, the Mautic uh, server respond something to the, the form, you can actually intercept that, that response and handle that response for you. Whenever there is a validation, this is a client side validation, you can actually intercept that validation, add your own validation if you want, and uh, and then tell what the browser do. Whenever a field is, is marked as an error, you can also intercept that and do additional things. Uh, there is a plenty of things that you can actually manipulate and, and improve and reach the user experience on your your form. So I'll paste here the link if you guys are interested. 
uh, yeah, so but of course I will share the code and I explain how you can put so your form can handle those custom errors, right? And that should be it. So that uh, that is basically what I show it. There is one additional challenge, you know, which was just is it that I that I have to solve is basically if you look at the form validation of the post result, this validation happens bef before uh, the submission is handled, is saved, but after the field mapping occurs, right? So this is an issue that I found. So even though you're validating the submission and you return an error, this kind of validation happens after your mapping, your field mapping occurs. So, for example, here I have name, email, and phone. So, if you have all those fields or additional fields mapping to a lead field, this mapping will occur. So, you don't want to do that if you're valid in that scenario that much different people are trying to submit with the email. So in order to fix that, what's really simple solution that I found was to add another form just to do the mapping. So the custom JavaScript already validates and submits so you can do your own mapping. You just need to clone the form and do the mapping in the second form. Uh, I, I realized that maybe not the best solution. If you, if you want, one thing that I could do is use that serverless function to map, uh, to update the lead fields. But if I did that, that function would be very specific for each form. And I don't want to do that. I want more people to, to use that function as it is. Uh, so create you creating a form cloning that form to map the data, I guess would be a simpler solution for everyone to, to use. All right? Uh, yeah, I guess I have uh, four mo five more minutes before the Q&A. And if it's too, maybe if it's too technical for you, uh, here is a summary what, that I want you to guys to leave with the, those key points uh, in your mind, right? So the key points are post results, post result to another form action works like a webhook. You can use like a webhook, it works just fine. Uh, there are a special uh, characteristics that I said that actually benefits the webhook. Uh, another key point that I want you guys to leave with that is you can validate the form submission outside mount, right? Just the idea. So think about that. Think about additional potential solutions that you can re that, that you can bring by using different tools to to enrich the validation of your form. The third thing that I want to uh, to leave with that uh, with that information that you can customize and add behavior to your Mautic form user interface, uh, right? So I, I post a link, you can learn more about it. Uh, I usually love to, to increase that, uh, I'm working on additional things as well. And the, the fourth thing is the code that, that, I'm, that I'm sharing. It is in GitHub. You will find the code, you will find the way that you can uh, deploy it with no coding is still needed. It will deploy on Netlify that I said. Uh, Netlify has a free plan. Uh, you are charged by function calls. So you can actually call 125,000 times that function for free before you will bump to a paid cost. And of course, you know, you could migrate to a different tools uh, if 
if people want to collaborate and move to end 8 a.m welcome to i can try to help with that uh that that would be maybe a more approachable for for the community and that's it i guess i will open up for questions thank you uh leo very detailed love it and also thank you for sharing all the links it's uh there in the q and a and also i was kind enough to also post it by the by the chat um so I have a question. Do you think this should be part of Mautic, this opportunity that you somehow validate for duplications? Uh, yeah, I guess if it is part of Mautic, uh, I would move it to a plugin, right? Uh, or so, some ca kind of of that validation. So, so, so yeah, I can see eventually this being migrated to uh, out of the box function that you say oh, avoid duplication or if already those fields already submitted it seems that like a a good function a good feature to to have in, in a mod okay um <clears throat> what about posting multiple web hooks or calls right for uh, different validations this right, is something so we talked about backstage <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so interesting thing about uh, posting results to to another form action. So those actions will run in sequence, right? So you can actually add different va validations. It will grow, you know, run the first action, then the, the second one, and if it, I heard it will stop. So it, it is interesting, you know, you can either run multiple validations or run actions after the validation, right? So like send, send a notification, sending an asset to the user, you want to make sure that uh, that action is after uh, the, the validation action. One thing that, that uh, I want you guys to be aware is that the, the, the user will be waiting for all the that code to be processed. So this is a very quick function. Uh, actually, the the serverless function actually only runs uh, up to ten seconds, right? After ten seconds, it will drop. You don't want you don't want the user waiting ten seconds. That's a lot for a forum. Uh, if there is a validation that takes a lot of time, I would recommend like a synchronous validation. Maybe send an email, like oh your enrollment was not accepted because of this. Um, that so you don't want uh user hanging to that one so i'll be aware of that but other than that you do you can run several actions those actions can have can be multiple validations or can run, be different actions it will run in sequence that's interesting and important to know uh yeah just be aware of the time the user will be waiting for that validation. Yeah, we talked about the attention lifespan in the previous uh, presentation, and uh, uh, Gaurav said that it's uh, seven seconds for the Gen Z. So if something is not happening in seven seconds, you basically lost the person. Uh, um, uh, what about what about uh, cases when you don't recommend this uh, this solution? Besides, when there is lots of data processing, I understand, and the answer is slow. Uh, yeah, I guess the, the first thing uh, I would rec not recommend is the pro process time, right? This is, will be the first no. Uh, from the forums uh, and the question forums that I saw, I, I saw people asking to do those kind of validation, not to validate the form, but to send data for the user. Let's say they want to the status of the flight, status of something. They want to return that information to to the user. I would not recommend that specific solution, mainly because you can only send that data if it's an error. If any, and if it's an error, the, the data is not saved, right? So you, in that case, what I would recommend you can you can still use post result, but you save that data in another in a custom field, for example, and then show that data in a dynamic 
content to the user, I, I think that would be a best, better solution uh, not to return an error, but just process the information and then show additional content. And that content can, can be populated by the serverless function, by a, a function that will populate that into multi. I guess that would be a, a better solution for, for that. Cool. Uh, there are no more questions. So I would want to ask you one more thing. And we talked about this as well. Do you think that this type of solution could be the basis of better spam protection in forms? Or you would stick to another solution instead of developing this further? Uh, yeah, like, like we dis discussed in the, yeah. uh, in the back end. Uh, for, I actually didn't think about using that as a, a spawn protection. For spawn protection, what I use and I recommend is recapture because you don't have to worry about, you know, deploy, uh, working on all the, the security uh, planning and, and it's a race, right? When people, people try to spawn, they try to figure out what security measures you're using to try right. to, to, to overcome that, that security. So you don't want to, unless you're a security specialist, you don't want to go to that race, you lose eventually. So I would recommend recapture or some other solutions. Uh, recapture from Google uh, works fine. There is a, there is already a plugin that, that I use to do that. Uh, because it's from Google, I realize some people don't like it or has some restrictions, EDPR restrictions. Specific for recapture, Google offers a different domain uh, that, that you can use that don't save any cookies or like very uh, straightforward for that, 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 that you can use. But like I said, because this question come very recently, uh, I'll co I committed to research more about that and maybe get a different answer about the best solutions. But you know, the short answer is don't don't go around trying to race mm -hmm. to win a race that you're not winning because people will try to find a way to to overcome your security measure, it's best to use a, a tool already defined it with people, I expect people that, that already solve and, and are willing to improve their, their, their solution, their security right. solution. Probably that's the right thing to do. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I'm especially glad that, you know, there's a presentation with, with detailed code descriptions and all the resources. Uh, what we added to the chat, we're going to put here on YouTube in the show notes. And if we find out about that Google uh, domain, it will be also added uh, to, the, to, the, to the YouTube video. So thank you so much, Leo, once again. And I hope I talk to you soon on the next uh, next uh, conference or maybe next in-person conference, uh, but definitely on the on the forums and on GitHub. And the viewers, soon we're going to continue with the next session uh, in about 20, 25 minutes from now. Right. See you. Bye. See you. Bye.